Good evening. Um, this might be a little dangerous to get me up here. <laughs> uh, if I break down, I'm sorry. Um, it's my little sister. So Natasha, my little sister, she was she was born May the sixth, nineteen eighty four, into our family, and uh, she was the youngest of our four children, of the four children in our home. And she, as you can see from this little picture here, she was a beautiful, round-faced, happy little baby. She was perfect to us, and we loved her. And it, and it was apparent very soon that Natasha would have challenges in her life that we would never face, we could never understand. Very quickly, we found out that she was going to have seizures, and this would become a regular part of her life. And over the years, we sought to find the best medical attention we could to alleviate these seizures. Measures were taken to help with them, to make her life a little bit better. But ultimately, she did have these seizures in one form or another throughout the entirety of her life. You know, this life is not always fair. It's certainly not always easy. We're constantly surrounded with pain and sadness and suffering and loss. And we deal with difficult things every single day. But we also know that there is hope and things will get better. One of my favorite authors, and I put it here in my Bible, this is not the Bible, this is a different author. She put it so perfectly. And I'm going to read it so I get it just right. It says, The world, though fallen, is not all sorrow and misery. In nature itself, and in nature, in nature itself are messages of hope and comfort. There are flowers upon the thistles, and the thorns are covered with roses. To me, Natasha was a rose among the thorns. One thing is true. Life is not always easy for Natasha. But if that is true, it's also tr this is also true. Natasha's vigor for life, her internal spring of joy, her spunky personality, her completely unpredictable sense of humor, <laughs> and her true capacity to love deeply and purely could not be stifled uh, despite any challenges that she faced. Now I'm going to go through a couple of these things. Her joy, her spunkiness, her sense of humor, and her love. If I'm thinking of a joyful Natasha, <laughs> she was she was joyful a lot actually, and I have a lot of funny stories about Natasha, and I can only tell a couple here. <laughs> but when when she was joyful, you knew it. And when I think of a, a, of a of a scenario where she was truly joyful, it was when she would be riding in the car with me, for whatever reason. Maybe she came over for dinner, and I was giving her a ride home or whatever, and. Every time we did that, we would turn the music all the way up to the top. <laughs> Not just any music, old, kind of old school country music. We're talking about George Strait, and Randy Travis, and Brooks and Dunn, and, Dunn, and, Dunn, and uh, what's that guy? What's that guy who was on Monday Night Football? Um, Hank Williams Jr. <laughs> and in fact, much to the horror of some of the little church ladies who lived where we were. Her favorite song for many years was, There's a Tear in My Beer. <laughs> I'm crying for you, dear. Oh, and she would sing it all the time. <laughs> but what, what Natasha did, she would sing at the top of her lungs. She would sing, and she knew every word. It was, it was an uncanny ability. She knew every word, and she sang with perfect pitch. It was crazy. It was, and she would only stop every once in a while to, to just scream, Mackenzie, I love this song. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was joyful, Natasha. She was joyful. 
uh, and excited Natasha, she would, when she was ready to come in for a hug, you, you had to, you really had to brace yourself because she would come in, how many of you know she, she had one arm that didn't work as well. Through one of her surgeries, she lost the use of part of her arm there. But what she lacked in this arm, she made up for with this arm. And she would come in there and she would kind of hook you around the neck. So your neck is sitting right in the elbow here. And, and she would jostle you really good. And you kind of hoped you had a good chiropractor on here because she would really be in good shape. Yeah, that was, that was the joyful Natasha. And it was, it was a beautiful thing. Now the spunky Natasha. Spunky, a lot of things can be categorized in spunky. Spunky, her toughness. I watched Tasha so many times take a spill off of her off of her bicycle and you know, go through the gravel and she'd skin her knees up and she'd just kinda get up and dust herself off and there were no tears, there was none of that. She was she was pretty tough and through all the medical things that she went through, all the IVs that were started, she never flinched. But she was spunky. She was happy most of the time, but if you pushed her farther than she wanted to be pushed, you know, you, like I said, she had that one good arm and she would get this elbow going and it's like you, you had to get out of the way of the elbow because she would get you with that elbow. She was, yeah, she was spunky. One, this one time, we were down at OHSU in Portland and uh, Natasha was getting some tests done. Um, we went. We were in OHSU a lot, you know, doing doing things for Natasha. And uh, this particular time, the doctors wanted to basically gather information as to what was going on with her brain. They were trying to pick up brain activity, so they were attaching these little leads onto her head, and they were gluing these little electrodes. And it felt. <laughs> My mom knows this story. So there, there were, uh, it felt like dozens of these electrodes, but there was a, a lot of them, an entanglement of wires. And they had to secure them somehow, and so they kind of, I don't know if they just got over vigorous with the tape or what, but they affixed this sort of gauze wrap on her head and then taped it with this surgical tape until her head was at least twice the size of normal. And it was this big white egg form. And it was, we, we tried to mask it, and we kind of unbuttoned one of my little hats all the way to the biggest size and kind of put it on her head. And there was no disguising this, this massive white dome that she was walking around with. And so the doctor said, okay, um, you guys, uh, you have a few hours. You don't need to be here. You can, you know, you can take off and just, you know, we just need to collect some information. So at the time we were living in Alaska and we were just down visiting Portland, not a lot of shopping in Alaska. So we decided, you know, maybe we'll go shopping. And so we could have gone to a lot of places, you know, we could have gone to Target or we could have gone to Fred Meyer or we might even have fit in at Walmart. I don't know. <laughs> they, might not, they might not have noticed. <laughs> but, you know, we went, just went into Nordstrom. <laughs> <laughs> You would have thought they, the way they looked at us, you would have thought we had just escaped from the wall wall of pen. Because it was, whoa, what is this? And they would kind of smile and wave a little bit like, oh, hi. But uh, we were on best behavior, let me tell you. And we walked in there and we were being very quiet and we were not speaking too noisily and just kind of looking nonchalant, you know, like, like we belonged there, you know. But all of a sudden, in sort of a moment of inspiration, Natasha just took off running, like full like she was shot out of a cannon, straight through the women's wares, like through all the, all the, the women's clothing. And all attempts at like being subtle went out the window and my mom yelled, Mackenzie, get her! And we took, <laughs> and we took her, here we go. And Natasha is stampeding through the Nordstrom. And my mom and I are in hot pursuit, running her down. And I think for a moment, I think maybe all of Nordstrom, at least that floor, just stopped and watched the show for a minute. And we eventually caught her. At this time, she was probably nine. I was about 11 at the time. She was pretty fast. It took us a while to catch her. But by the time we caught her, we were kind of getting close to the exit that went into the mall. And yeah, we just kind of kept on going. I mean, got Norse Julius or something. <laughs> she was, yeah, she was spooky. She was funny. But you know, Tasha was funny too. Um, 
I, I can't always figure oh, out why. I've tried many times to think like, was she trying to be funny? Or did she just kind of have a peculiar way of making observations or starting conversations? Um, <laughs> it usually had to do with someone's physical appearance or something <laughs> like that. I remember multiple times us being really embarrassed at some of the stuff she would say. But I remember one time she, she looked at me and she said, Boy, Mackenzie, you sure do have one big nose. <laughs> there, was, there was usually some truth in the matter. <laughs> it's okay, I've come to terms with it. So. Um, but she was, she was funny in a lot of times, even now. We will, we will uh, sit around if we're talking as a family and Natasha comes up. Usually we're laughing. Usually we're... We're, it's just we're chuckling at something that she did and it wasn't always necessarily what she said it was the way that she said it it was her mannerism in doing it and and we take turns trying to impersonate her and nobody can impersonate her as good as Adriana so <laughs> I can wait but the, um, if you can never get Adriana to do that it's it's worth it um, but Natasha's, Natasha's truest gift, it, it will always be the fact that she was able to really love. Mm -hmm. She had a true capacity to do that. Um, anyone that she knew well, she loved. Our, I mean, it goes without saying our family, my mom and my dad. My mom spent the most time with her. She loved my dad. She loved reading stories with him and going for car rides. <laughs> I'm sorry. And she loved us, like my brother and my sister and me. And I remember Natasha, one way that we expressed our love for each other. I don't know when this started. I don't know how it developed. But it was her and my way of connecting with each other. We would, uh, whenever we saw each other, you know, maybe she would invite you to sit on the couch next to her. Would you like to sit next to me? And you'd sit next to her. And she would look at me and she would always say, Mackenzie, can I snap your thimble? <laughs> in, in just a regular scenario, you may be taken aback by that request. But, uh, snap your thimble. But she, for Natasha, an Adam's apple was a thimble. So that's what she called it. So she was wanting to snap my Adam's apple. And so I would oblige. And then she would, like, snap it real good like that. And, and then she would kind of crane her neck out because she wanted me to snap her thing. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, snap her thimble. And then she would go, she would act all surprised like she didn't know it was coming. She would go, Mackenzie Craig. <laughs> Those of you know, who know her, you know she would do that. <laughs> and, and it was so much fun. Why not do it again? So then she would snap my thimble again, and we would just go back and forth, and we might do this for a while. <laughs> Eventually, someone would, would submit. It was usually me, and we would move on. Um, but that was, she knew how to love. Um, she knew how to love deeply. Um, our sister-in-law, Chris, had a very special relationship with Natasha. She understood her. Um, she was patient with her. She loved Natasha. And Natasha really loved her too. And uh, Natasha had this little picture, like in a frame of Chris. And she would sit there and she would take it and she would put it in her arm like this and her arm that didn't work so well. She would sit there and look at him like this. And she'd smile. And she'd look at it again. And she'd smile. And she'd do this over and over, many times a day. And this didn't go on for days or weeks or months. This happened for years and years and years. And the thing that me, to, the thing to me that was the so was so amazing was, it was as if every time she looked at that picture with her eyes wide open. She was seeing it for the first time. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And then she would smile as if that picture had made her happy for the first time. Mm. Yeah, she had a, a really beautiful capacity to love. And, it, and it's what 
That's what I will remember most about her. Um, you know, it's fun to talk about all these stories, about all this stuff that happened on Earth here. It's, there's, there's, there's sad things, and there's happy things, and there's a lot of different stories. But what I'm really excited about is what is yet to come. Because this isn't it, and this, this, is, this is not where we're going to end. Um, I have a quick verse. And this verse is found in, let me see here. It's found in Hebrews 13, verse 14. And it says, For this world is not our home. We are looking forward to our everlasting home in heaven. And I can't wait to see Natasha again. And I've always wondered, what would she have been like if she had been free of her condition? And when, then, and when that day comes, I can't wait to find her in the crowd. And that's who I'm going to go for first. I'm going to I'm gonna hunt her down. I'm going to find her. And I know that God is going to restore her. At least that's how I believe. And she will be made perfect. And when she comes to hug me, she will hug me with two arms. <laughs> Not one. And she will look at me with a twinkle in her eye. This is how I imagine it. As if to say, I know that was just a silly little game we played as kids, a little inside joke. But then she's going to ask me if she can snap my thimble. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to kind of do our thing, and, and that's going to be that. I'm going to, I'm going to leave you with, with one verse, and, and this is one of my favorites. It gives me goosebumps every time I read it. This is found in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. And it says, The Lord himself will come down from heaven, and there will be a loud command with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And those who have died and were in Christ will rise first. After that, those who are still alive at that time will be gathered up with them. We will be taken into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we will be with the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Um, at this time, we're going to watch a quick little um, PowerPoint uh, of Tasha, or a little, a little slideshow of Tasha, and kind of kind of some of the times of uh, how she grew up and just some of the different things. So after that, we'll take a few minutes, and if any of you want to share any memories that you have of Natasha, um, we'll take a little time to do that, okay? So, thank you.